Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about bird feeders and bird seed, and we'd like to thank Glitter Queen for giving us a rating and review for our book three on Amazon. Was and it a five-star rating? It was a four-star rating. Oh, ouch. <laughs> That's good. We appreciate any four- and five-star ratings, so thank you, Glitter Queen. And if you're looking for a nice reference for your home improvement projects, it's Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, book three on Amazon. Cher Ami was a homing pigeon who worked in France what? during World War One. Were you speaking a different language? And she helped the Lost Battalion of the 77th Division. So there were over 500 people trapped. So these are 500 soldiers trapped behind enemy lines. They were out of food, out of ammunition, surrounded by the Germans, and they were getting fired on by the Allies because no one knew their location. Hmm. So, And what's wild is in World War Two and World War One. It's amazing how many armies used homing pigeons for, you know, communications. So two homing pigeons were released and shot down by German troops. They released a third pigeon, the Cherami, and it was shot out of the air too, but it managed to get back up and flew 25 miles to deliver a message. Wow, what a trooper. And, and so they actually saved 194 soldiers directly because of this bird. And the bird was shot in the chest. It lost an eye and a leg. Wow. So, the, so the medics worked on her for, and to keep her alive. And when she finally recovered, they fitted her with a wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> and she won a, a medal, too. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> I really went off on a tangent. You, Shocking, you, you can't that imagine how much time I spent on, on <laughs> what I learned on homing. Oh, yes, I can. You know, they used homing pigeons until 1957. Mm, well, you couldn't text well. anyone, could you? <laughs> so... Bird seed. Sunflower seeds attract the widest variety of birds, and so there's two main types of sunflower seeds. You have black oil and striped. Mm -hmm. The black oil is a thin-shelled seed, so it's very easy for birds to open up, crack open. The striped sunflower seeds have a thicker shell, so they're a little more difficult for some birds to mm. crack open. And you can also get shelled sunflowers if you want to eliminate the mess of all these cracked shells underneath the feeder right, yeah. in your yard. But shelled sunflower seeds are a little more expensive, and they can go bad and spoil faster. Oh, really? So you, know, you have to put a, a small amount at a time hmm. if you're using shelled seeds. Well, most of these. You actually don't want to overfill your bird feeders because hmm. you can get mold, mildew, collect bacteria, and the seeds can go bad. So you're really looking to fill it so that you know the birds go through it in a day or two. Oh, no. Black sunflower has a high oil content, so this is important for birds' nutrition, and it also provides protein and vitamins. And you can grow your own sunflowers, and then in the fall, take the seeds for bird seed, mm -hmm. or you can just leave the flowers out, and the birds will feed right off it. Buntings, cardinals, finches, grosbeaks, jays, woodpeckers, and chickadees all love sunflower seeds. And there are bat-killing chickadees. No way. So these tiny little songbirds, usually only about five inches, hmm. researchers found that if they run out of food in the winter, they listen for the high-pitched squeaks from bats, mm -hmm. and then they attack the bats, killing them, and then they feed on them. Why are you so excited about this? <laughs> so these researchers said that they really prefer seeds and insects, but they've adapted for survival. <laughs> <laughs> and they also said they're amazingly quick learners, and then they teach other chickadees their skills. Uh, like they're uh, become assassins. <laughs> Safflower seeds are a hard-shelled white seed, and they'll attract cardinals, gross beaks, doves, sparrows, and finches. And what a lot of people like about safflower is if you have a squirrel problem, mm -hmm. the squirrels find safflowers very bitter. Really? And so they don't eat them, so they won't be attacking like your bird feeder. Hmm. Millet are small white seeds, and these have a hard shell. They're less expensive than many of the bird seeds. They provide really good nutrition, and millet is really popular when you get a bird feed mix or a bird seed mix. Right. And this is going to attract buntings, doves, cardinals, wrens, finches, thrushes, sparrows, and they also said pheasants and quail. You can grow white prozo millet in your garden, and then you can either collect the seeds in fall, or again, you can just leave them out, and birds will eat it right off the plant. No feeder necessary. Yeah. 
Niger seeds, sometimes called thistle, although it's not a true thistle, are very small black seeds and because it's grown in Africa, India, and parts of Asia, it's going to be more expensive than most bird seeds. Mm -hmm. And the seeds actually have to be sterilized with high heat before they can be imported to kill any noxious weed seeds that could be in the mix. Yeah. They're very high in oil and nutrients, so this is a great energy source for winter bird food. And because the seeds are so small, usually you're going to put this into special mesh feeders or bags, and that's the best way to feed a small bird if you want to exclude big birds. Big from, birds? Right. The, like the big bird? All right. <laughs> so small birds can actually grab onto the mesh with their feet and then pick out the seeds. Is this the thing that looks like a sock? Right, and you can get that type. Yeah, you can get mm. a sock feeder, and usually you'd be using the Niger seeds. They can make a mess under a feeder, though, so you can get a, a feeder with a platform under it to catch the spilt seed, and that way you can actually feed a couple styles. So you can have the main part of it feeding the small birds, and then you can have a perch underneath with a tray, mm -hmm. so larger birds can get that. And Niger is going to attract a wide variety. Small birds like sparrows and finches love it. And you know there's a vampire finch? Hmm. So these are native to the Galapagos Islands, and they drink the blood of other birds. And scientists think that it evolved from the habit of cleaning parasites off birds like the booby and then accidentally drawing blood, and now they have a taste for blood and it's part of their diet. Again, your enthusiasm is frightening. <laughs> Milo are small red seeds, inexpensive, and then usually part of a bird seed blend because mm -hmm. very few birds will eat Milo alone. Hmm. although it will attract doves, turkeys, and pheasant. Corn, cracked corn, is popular with ground-feeding birds, inexpensive. This is found in some bird seed mixes also. Jays, blackbirds, sparrows, doves, turkeys, ducks, and quail like corn. Mm -hmm. And peanuts, very high in fat, good source of energy and calories for cold winter areas. Larger birds like peanuts, like crows, jays, wrens, doves, and woodpeckers, Although squirrels and chipmunks really like peanuts, too. <laughs> Suet comes in a wide variety of ingredients and shapes, and the most common is called a cake. Right. It's four and a half by four and a half square, so four and a half inches square, inch and a half thick, and this is designed to fit into a cage-style mm -hmm. feeder. And you can get suet balls, plugs, pellets, and shreds no way. that you can put into trays. And they have different types of feeders or dishes mm -hmm. for the different shapes. And you can also get wreaths and bell shapes for like the holidays. Yeah, wow, exciting. And, and most suet is a high-fat, high-protein blend. So they either use rendered fat or peanut butter. So it's very nutritious mm -hmm. for birds. The meat-based suet, though, can spoil in high temperatures and go rancid, which makes it unhealthy. So you have to only put out as much as birds will eat in a couple of days if you're in an area with high temperatures. So what do you do? Just buy one cake? and Or, or just, you know, store them in a cool, dry place and then just put out, mm -hmm. you know, a small amount at a time if you have hot temperatures. There are fruit blends flavored with small bits of dried fruit or fruit flavor. You have seed suet that has black oil sunflower, millet, corn, or safflower seeds built into it. You have nut blends, so you can get peanuts, pecans, almonds, and pistachios no way. in the suet. <laughs> you think that'd be expensive for a bird. Yeah. You can get insect suet. It has flies, crickets, and mealworms inside mm, of it. And then exciting. also, if you have a problem with squirrels, you can get hot pepper suet. <laughs> so the squirrels and raccoons aren't going to like it. And most birds aren't bothered by anything hot. Really? Yeah, which is interesting. And then for summer feeding, there's also something called no-melt suet. So you don't have as much of a mess of it breaking apart and dripping underneath it. Suet is really a good feed for birds in cold areas during winter because mm -hmm. it's going to provide energy. And you would want to use a covered feeder or use bits or shreds so it's easy to feed so that like sometimes the cakes get so hard right. in freezing weather that it's better to get these you know smaller particles. You can also press soft suet into the bark of trees for woodpeckers and smaller birds. They'll just grab hold and feed off of it like that. And you can also make a suet cake yourself. No way. You take two parts melted fat, either beef fat or lard, two parts cornmeal, and one part peanut butter. You mix this all together and cook it for a few minutes until it all melts. Hmm. You blend it together and then pour it into a small container and freeze it. And then you can pull this out and you have cakes whenever you want to feed it to the birds. <laughs> You can also make a pine cone feeder. 
So you can take some jute string around the top of a pine cone. You can push peanut butter into the pine cone and then roll it in a pile of bird seed to cover the peanut butter and then hang it out for the birds. And what's the purpose of that? <laughs> the peanut butter is very healthy for uh -huh. the birds and the bird seed. I guess and it'd be a good craft to do with your yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And another thing you can do is you can make homemade bird meal. So this is one cup of peanut butter, one cup of vegetable shortening, four cups of cornmeal, one cup of flour, and then a quarter cup of sunflower seeds, and you mush this all together. And a couple of the pros said that they recommend smearing this into the bark of a tree, and it attracts small birds and very nutritious. Mm, delightful. <laughs> Nectar is a sweet liquid primarily used to attract hummingbirds, but there are other birds on occasion that like something sweet like orioles, sunbirds, warblers, and woodpeckers. And a couple sites that I were reading, they warn, depending on the neighborhood you live in, bears and bats sometimes like nectar. Mm, that's a bummer. <laughs> you can also make your own nectar, one part sugar, four parts water. You want to heat it up for a couple of minutes just so the sugar dissolves and it slows down fermentation. Allow this to cool and then put it into a feeder for hummingbirds. You never want to use honey, brown sugar, molasses, or a sugar substitute. Honey can actually ferment and grow mold that's deadly to hummingbirds. That's a bummer, trying to be nice and feed them right. and you kill them. <laughs> There's a few main styles in feeders. One style is called the chalet or hopper or house and this usually looks like a house with a roof on top mm -hmm. and the main body is going to hold a large amount of seed and it can either be square or round. There's a variety of shapes. Plexiglass is a popular material so that you can monitor the seed and then you can get a variety of perch styles for you know different types of birds and they can either feed off trays or openings at the bottom of the feeder. And then some hopper styles will come with raised perches, so you can either hang it or set it on a flat surface. Oh, okay. The tops that lock in place are going to keep out squirrels and rain. And then if you're hanging this, most pros suggest five feet off the ground is a good height for the greatest variety of birds. Mm -hmm. If you're putting it close to your house, keep it closer than three feet to a window or further than ten feet away so Why? that birds are less likely to slam into your window. <laughs> Again, trying to be nice feeding the birds and you're killing them. <laughs> Tube feeders are cylinders filled with seed and these usually have smaller openings and small perches so that way you're limiting the types of birds that are getting to it and keeping squirrels from easily getting into the seed. Some are designed with perches above the opening so that birds can hang upside down to feed. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, so, so then you can really specialize like chickadees and woodpeckers. And then some tube feeders are made just for niger seeds, so this has a tight mesh, and then the small birds are just grabbing hold of the side of it to feed from it. Uh -huh. You can also get tube feeders with a tray and larger perches if you want to attract larger birds. Tray or platform feeders are feeders that are set on the ground, so they'll either have feet or a frame that's going to keep it just above the surface for drainage, and you want to make sure that you're getting large drainage holes or a screening that's going to help keep the seed dry. And with this type, you only want to add enough seed for a day or two to prevent mold, mildew, and bacteria growth. Right. And this is going to attract a wide variety of birds and then other animals. And some platform feeders are going to either have a wire mesh or a roof above the tray, so it only allows a certain type of bird to get to the seed, and then it's blocking raccoons and cats and squirrel, mice, deer, and porcupines. <laughs> you know, porcupines have a special bacteria in their digestive system that breaks down wood. No, JC, I did not know that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Cardinals, doves, finches, and sparrows are attracted to tray feeders, and you can either leave these on the ground or you can get special tray feeders that you can mount on a pole so mm -hmm. you can get it up off the ground. Yeah. So if you're worried about other pests in your yard. Suet feeders are usually holding that cake style, and some will hold a couple at a time. Some will hold suet cakes and seed, both. No way. You can get upside down suet feeders. So it looks like a little birdhouse, and it has a cage underneath it, so yeah. the birds have to fly underneath to get to the suet. I don't think I've ever seen that. You can get suet feeders with a roof. You can get log suet feeders. So this is a long tube with holes in it for the suet balls, mm -hmm. and then you can also shove peanut butter in there. <laughs> You can get mealworm feeders. So this has a small tray to hold mealworms and a little roof on top of it. And mealworms are very popular with bluebirds. Hmm. 
you can get sock feeders, and these are usually used with the Niger seed, and you we can know. and you can either get disposable or reusable, and you can get them filled or unfilled. And so this is a woven cloth mesh, and the birds just cling to it and pull and out. It looks the... like a sock. <laughs> there you go. You can also get hummingbird feeders. So this is a tube or a bowl shape to hold the nectar. And mm -hmm. some bowl styles will have a roof to keep out rain and block sunlight. Some have perches, some don't. Drip. Some look like fruit. Yeah, it's, it, there's a, a, actually an amazing variety of these hummingbird feeders. You can get dripless feeders that will be less attractive to ants, so they're not dripping all this, this <laughs> sweet stuff on the ground. And then there's bee-proof feeders, you know, to prevent bees. And if you're having a problem, a couple of the pros were saying you can get tanglefoot. So that's that very sticky, non-drying uh, material that you can put on the hang cord. So if ants try to work up a, a tree branch and down the string that's holding the feeder, once they get stuck to it, they can't go back to the colony and leave that chemical trail that, hey, I found food. <laughs> so all the workers just get caught on this. So you have this string just filled with... Dead you know, ants? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nectar should be changed every three or four days. And in very hot weather, change it every day. If you see mold, take it down and scrub it with a bottle brush. And you don't want to use harsh detergents. I would use either vinegar and water or a mild soap and water and then rinse it very thoroughly. Only add enough nectar that's going to last that three or four days. Mm -hmm. And then I would pick a feeder that comes apart easily so it's easy to clean because right. you have to have a lot of maintenance with the hummingbird feeders. Well, some of them are glass, and I think those would be harder to... Yeah, I mean, they're beautiful, but I think they'd be harder to clean all Yeah, the I would go with something that's easy to clean. <laughs> Window bird feeders are going to have suction cups so you can stick it to the glass for bird watching. So if you have kids or pets, this is nice. And what's nice is most of them are going to have a material on it where you can see out, but the birds can't see in. So like if you have are your, you worried about, about? Well, if you have your cat sitting there watching the birds, oh. they're not freaking out the birds. But the cats are going crazy inside. <laughs> yeah, pounding on the glass. <laughs> They're usually going to have a tray style with perches. And I had a great tip for getting the suction cups to stick really well. Yeah. So you want to clean your window first and then soak the suction cups in warm water for a few minutes. Dry them off. They need to be thoroughly dry. And then rub your nose and your face with your fingers to pick up some oil your from nose? your skin. And then rub this onto the suction cup and it will stick better. That's your tip? Rub your face. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> you have a lot of big decisions when you're feeding the birds. Like, Who knew it was complex? What kind of feeder? <laughs> what kind of seed? Do you like all birds? Do you not like yeah, some birds? Yeah, you just want like some birds. So do you have any tips on being successful at feeding the birds? I would have multiple feeders and styles. That way you're going to track the widest amount of birds, and you're going to reduce the number of birds trying to feed on one feeder. And then to lessen the chance of birds flying into windows, keep your feeder either closer than 3 feet or further than 10 feet from windows. I saw on the Humane Society website that they said yeah. keep it 30 feet away. Crazy, huh? Yeah, because <laughs> I guess by a pair of binoculars. <laughs> well, there's millions of birds that hit windows every year. Mm -hmm. So you want to also have your feeders by trees or shrubs. That way you're going to have more birds. Evergreens make a good shelter in winter. If you're in a cold climate, it's going to block wind and predators. And then keep your feeders clean. You want to clean your feeder once every two weeks. That way it's going to prevent the buildup of mold and mildew bacteria, stop transmission of diseases. Take the bird feeders apart. Use hot soapy water. Use a soft scrub brush. And then if you find mold, most pros are suggesting you use one part bleach and nine parts water. Scrub it thoroughly, rinse it, then wash it with soapy water, and then rinse it thoroughly again. And if you're purchasing a bird feeder, I would check how easy it is to take apart. I would remove the top and the sides, just see if it's easy. For a hopper style, you can get a locking lid, and then make sure you're cleaning the drain holes. And then allow it to dry thoroughly before you add seed because that's going to prevent mold and mildew. This is a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. you got to clean it. you got to go out there every couple days. Right. You must really like birds. <laughs> For seeds, sunflower seeds are going to attract the widest variety of birds. Peanuts, white millet, and niger also very popular. They all have good nutrient value. In cold climates, you want to offer suet and peanut butter for energy. And there were some people online that were talking about peanut butter possibly choking birds, but studies found no evidence that peanut butter is dangerous for birds. Hmm. And it's also high in nutrient value and energy. 
And in the winter, you want to be consistent in areas that freeze. A high quality food is going to help birds survive either severe weather or extended cold. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you keep the food dry, only put out enough to last a few days, and then check for moisture, mold, and mildew. And then keep the area raked underneath your bird feeders. That way you're going to prevent the lawn damage from debris and droppings. And then it's also going to reduce the risk of disease. You also want to provide water. So bird baths near trees or shrubs or near the feeders. You want to keep them in a sunny area in a cold climate and then a shady area in hot climates. And most birds actually like shallow pools of water. So some of these bird baths that are too deep Mm -hmm. They've actually done some studies that birds avoid it because they're scared of deep water. <laughs> so shallow water, you can put a few stones in there for smaller birds. And then mm -hmm. in cold climates, you can add a heater in the winter. And it uses very low voltage, but it keeps the water from freezing. Because birds can become dehydrated, even if they're surrounded by snow. They just really? can't get enough hydration. Hmm. For storing bird seed, bins with an airtight locking lid are going to keep the seed fresh and help prevent mold and mildew. What do you and need you, for smaller bags of bird seed? So you can get a variety of sizes, so almost like a Tupperware for small bags. For larger bags or for bulk, you can get these bins that have a locking lid and wheels on it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some that are modular, so you've got multiple storage areas, so you can keep scoops and other accessories right. in, in the top part. And then if you're getting a scoop, I would get a scoop that matches the type of feeder you have so it doesn't spill. A couple styles I, I saw, they have scoops with a funnel built into the handle so you can scoop it and tilt your scoop up and then they have a lever release so that it fills the feeder. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was cool. You should keep your seed in a cool dry area. Like where? And like so, in the garage? So most pros recommend keeping it in the house like in a pantry hmm. and then that's why you want a locking lid so you're not attracting you know rodents or insects. I would get clear containers. It makes it easier to check the condition of the seed. And then you only want to buy enough that's going to fit into your container. You don't right. want to overbuy because properly stored bird seed should last about a year. Hmm. What are some top rated feeders? Perky Pet, Brome. Have B you spelled it all? B R this episode? B R O M E. No, no. So it's no slash no. And then Nature Anywhere and H. Potter. So it's H dot Potter. How about some top rated bins? Iris, I R I S, and they have those stacking bins with wheels and modular, mm -hmm. and it comes with scoops. And then Vittles Vault, V I T T L E S, Vault. Wow, we talked a lot about bird seed. Yeah, I didn't think we'd talk this long. Yeah, I don't even like birds. <laughs> nice. Do you have anything else to add? If you want to pick one type of bird seed, the black oil sunflower is the best overall seed. You're going to attract the widest variety of birds, provides great nutrition. If you're picking a blend, a higher blend of sunflower and millet is going to attract the widest variety and it's going to provide good nutrition. The milo, wheat, oats, and other grains that are in these mixes aren't going to be as attractive for most birds. Better quality bird seed is going to come in clear packaging. That way you can inspect it for mold, mildew, and insects. Because one it, thing, like if you're keeping the bird seed in a container in your pantry, right. you do have to worry about moss. Yes. So we should mention a couple pantry moth traps. So Taro, Safer, and Harris all have really nice traps for moths. Right. And these are non-toxic, so they're right. safe to have around the house. If you're buying bags, and you're just buying small bags at a time, you can get these easy open tabs, some that have handles and resealable bags. Mm -hmm. So those are, are very nice. And then if you're putting up bird feeders, several types are going to attract the most amount of birds. If you're in an area that has freezing temperatures in winter, suet and peanut butter are going to help birds get through harsh conditions. You want to store your seed in airtight bins to prevent spoilage, mold, mildew, and then reduce any problems with insects and pests. And then don't overfill your feeders. It's better to have to go out there and fill it more often. Right, and keep them clean. Yes, clean them once every two weeks. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed it, please give us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, 1, 2, and 3, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.
Jeff with the 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 Jeff